Joe's gonna come out smoking, but I ain't gonna be joking. I'll be pecking and a poking, pouring water on his smoking. This might shock and amaze you, but this time I retired Joe Frazier. And retire him he did. The famous Thrilla and Manila fight ended after Frazier's trainer stopped the fight following the 14th round, giving Ali a technical knockout. Ali was on a roll again. But his greatest athletic comeback was in Kinshasa, in what was then Zaire. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Ali knocked out the heavily favored young champion, George Foreman. It was called the Rumble in the Jungle. His last fight in 1981 would mark the beginning of another battle that Ali described as his toughest the diagnosis that he was afflicted with Parkinson's disease. After two decades of redefining the heavyweight division, Ali was forced to retire. His lifetime record, 56 victories, just five defeats. But he never retreated from living a very public life. In 1996, Ali provided one of the most poignant moments in sports history. With three billion people watching, he lit the Olympic flame at the Summer Games in Atlanta. His hands trembling, but never wavering. Ali remained the consummate showman. As his condition grew progressively worse, Ali struggled each day to whisper a word. His hands and legs shook, and his voice quivered. I am the greatest. Yet his spirit was never shaken and he never slowed down from serving as an ambassador for peace and a mediator in world conflicts. In 2005, Ali was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award, the nation's highest civilian honor. When you say the greatest of all time is in the room, everyone knows who you mean. And tributes for the champ continued. How do you feel about getting, getting the honor tonight? <laughs> Ali was one of the most gifted and unique personalities in sports history. The world may never see the likes of him again. In the final chapter, few would argue that Ali needed the crowds as much as they needed him. Not for mere validation, but because each saw in the other the best in themselves. Ali's got a left, Ali's got a right. If he hits you once, you're asleep for the night. And as you lie on the floor while the valve counts ten, hope and pray that you never meet me again. Muhammad Ali was so much of a citizen of the world, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, spent his final moments at a hospital in Scottsdale, Arizona. He was surrounded by close friends and family, and that is where we find our Dan Simon live this morning. Dan. Are you learning anything more about Muhammad Ali's final moments? Well, hi, Joe. Details at this point are thin. We do know that he was brought to the hospital on Thursday with what was described as a respiratory issue, which is common in patients uh, who have advanced Parkinson's. And at first, we were led to believe that this was going to be a brief hospital stay, according to the family spokesperson, that he was in fair condition. So I think the speed at which this all occurred may have caught a lot of people off guard. Of course, uh, he died here at the hospital uh, last night, and uh, he was surrounded by friends and family, as you said, Joe. He's been to the hospital before over the recent years and made it out okay. That is part of the surprise this morning, isn't it? That's right. Of course, he had been in failing health, uh, but this really was not expected. You know, he had pulled out, if you will, uh, each time he had been to the hospital. Uh, he had been in and out over the years. The last time he was seen in public was back in April at a, at a charity event, and he was frail, but, but he was getting around. Um, and so, you know, him coming to the hospital, I think, you know, was a big surprise to many expected to get some details about the funeral. Uh, at this point, they haven't released uh, any firm plans other than the fact we know that it is going to be in Louisville, Kentucky, in Muhammad Ali's hometown, Joe. And, and a memorial service in Louisville today, as far as we know, is that correct? 
That's exactly right. We don't have a, have a whole lot of details about that either, but but certainly uh, the city is is going to be out. Uh, you know, offering an opportunity uh, for people in that community to mourn uh, the life of, of Muhammad Ali. Uh, I can tell you that, that here at the hospital, Joe, uh, things have been a bit quiet, uh, but overnight we did see people uh, lighting candles, uh, dropping off uh, little mementos, things of that nature, and I would expect that to continue uh, throughout the day. Only the beginning, no doubt, of an enormous uh, remembrance of a world icon, in fact. Thanks so much for that, Dan Simon. And still to come, there's a side of Muhammad Ali that most people would never know, people that didn't get to meet him. Well, CNN's Pamela Brown did. We're going to talk to her and get the story behind this picture. Yes, that is her with Muhammad Ali. Also, how can anyone forget these images of Muhammad Ali later in life? Long and public fight he had with what was really his toughest opponent, Parkinson's disease. It took a toll on him. Is that the world has lost Muhammad Ali at the age of 74. Uh, people all over Twitter and Facebook and social media talking about him remembering him, thinking of his family, certainly thoughts and prayers to them today. <clears throat> but um, he had certainly, <coughs> excuse me, he had been somebody who had, had just taken the boxing world by storm and then transcended it right. into so many other areas of life where he proved to be such an inspiration to people. Changed boxing and I think he also changed the world in many ways, uh, standing up to the Vietnam War at a time when the United States was torn over the issue. Um, he changed our views of spirituality in some ways, uh, going from uh, a Baptist upbringing generally to the Nation of Islam on to uh, Sunni Islam and then to Sufism. <coughs> to Sufi. a, a very complicated man in so many different ways. His last challenge being uh, Parkinson's disease which was uh, uh, the thing that he carried with him for over 30 years. You know, his, his uh, daughter, Layla Ali, posted a picture of him with her daughter, Sydney, uh, who was born back in 2011, and said, I love this photo of my father and my daughter, Sydney, when she was a baby. Thanks for all the love and well wishes. I feel your love and appreciate it. And she followed him into boxing. She did follow him into boxing. Mm -hmm. and, and you would, I, you have to, I always have to wonder what he thought seeing her there. He had been there. He knew how tough it was. Do you wish that for your daughter? You know, Absolutely. it's that kind of thing. I know. But you know that he was his, her biggest fan. Um, boxing promoter Kelly Maloney is with us now, perhaps best known for managing Lennox Lewis when he won the heavyweight title in 1992. Um, Kelly, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I understand that you had met Muhammad Ali on several occasions. Uh, help us understand what he left you, what impression he left you with. What do you remember about this man that you will always take with you? Well, the first time I ever had the privilege of seeing Muhammad Ali in the flesh, you see, he was still Cassius Clay. It was just before the Henry Cooper fight at Highbury in London. And I was very lucky to skip off school and manage to get into the gymnasium at his public workout. And it was one of the most, I don't know, he just sort of mesmerized the whole room. People just stood there in awe of this man. And, and I think I was about 14 at the time, maybe a little bit younger. And it, it was then that I realized I, I wanted to get into boxing and work with heavyweight boxers. And um, then I met him later on in life. Uh, after one of the Lennox Lewis fights, he, he, we, we had the privilege of meeting him. Uh, Lennox had an audience with him and it was um, just fantastic to be in this room with Lennox Lewis who was the current world heavyweight champion and whose hero was Mohammed Ali and to hear Lennox talk about Mohammed and how he inspired Lennox to follow in the boxing ring and to hear Mohammed pay Lennox Lewis compliment and to see Ali to throw some sort of jabs, fun jabs and had to, had to duck and dive uh, and call him Lennox champ was the most amazing and humble thing that I've ever witnessed. Kelly, um, 
We call him the greatest. Muhammad Ali, that's the nickname he's gone by for years and years. But could you give me a sense from the boxing perspective, what is the biggest lasting mark that Muhammad Ali will leave on the sport? You know, I don't know because he has so many great moments. Everyone talks about um, the fight in the air with the rumble in the jungle with George Foreman. But my my great fight that I remember was the thriller in Manila with um, Joe Frazier when both of them were on the point of absolutely exhausting coming out for the last round. And Joe's Fra Joe Frazier's trainer in the end just waved his hand and it only admitted I'm so glad that they've done it because I would have collapsed in the neck in that last round. And I think that's an amazing compliment and I think that was one of the best fights I ever witnessed. And as a young person, I saved up my pocket money to watch the first Joe Frazier, Mohammed Ali fight at Madison Square Garden on closed circuit. And even that, when you just watch this man, they were just fantastic. He fights with Ken Norton, he fights with George Foreman, even the fight with um, Henry Cooper, the f first one, when he was put on the floor, I was I listened to that on the radio with my father, and there was just something about hmm. Muhammad Ali completely. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, he he was. You were transfixed on him when he was mm -hmm. in the room. Kelly Maloney, thank and you for sharing your memories. We we really appreciate your thoughts and and your voice on this. Thank you. Thank of you. course, of course. Now, look, there are some great quotes by uh, Muhammad Ali, some of them very profound, some of them uh, very funny. <laughs> Remember, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Uh, Muhammad, all in his own words, is what's coming up for you next. Also, he was more than a boxer. Muhammad Ali was the global sports icon in a way few others have ever been able to match. His influence on sports coming up next. as a whole. Omani Pacquiao now retired, uh, going to be a Philippine senator uh, for the next few years. Now, he has pretty much almost fashioned his career after that of Muhammad Ali, being not just engaged as a sports hero, but also a philanthropist. So definitely Muhammad Ali being mourned here in the Philippines as well. Something like this, Muhammad Ali, is definitely something that is very close to home because when he was here back in 1975, he was very much taken on by the Filipinos as one of their own. In fact, the area where the fight was held, a big giant mall was uh, built there and it is dedicated to him. It is now called Ali Mall. Uh, the British boxing journalist Colin Hart watched Muhammad Ali fight all over the world. He spoke with Al Jazeera in 2011 about the best moments from Ali's career. It was 1963. He came to London as Cassius Clay, 21 years of age, to fight Henry Cooper in a non-title fight, 10 rounds, at Wembley Stadium. The people in this country hated him because they're not used to this boasting, this guy who's in rhyme telling everybody how if Henry gives me any jive I'll knock him out in five and he was brash and he was I mean, a very good looking kid as you know wonderful smile but the British didn't take to him it was a different Britain but a far more conservative Britain in those days the fight that stands out in my mind are all the Ali fights I saw was the rumble in the jungle Kinshasa Zaire was I mean I covered eight Olympic games and I've covered boxing for nearly 50 years all over the world that is the standout occasion for me it was bizarre for one thing, the fight was going to start at 4 o'clock in the morning in Central Africa. Unheard of. It was the first time I really got to know the promoter, Don King. Uh, you know, once somebody once described him as having stepped out of a bath on a, a live wire uh, because of his hair sticking up. Uh, and the whole thing of being in Africa, a French-speaking African country, uh, a dictatorship with a tyrant, uh, President Mobutu, who uh, had got the fight for Zaire to put Zaire on the map, which it did. And as I say, you had Ali trying to win. Muhammad Ali is said to be in an extraordinarily grave condition, according to sources close to the family. Speculation has swirled about the 74-year-old's health after he was admitted to a Texas hospital on Thursday with a respiratory condition. Ali has suffered from Parkinson's disease for more than three decades. 
one of the best known figures of the 20th century. At his height, the boxing legend was known for his dancing feet and quick fists. Doctors believe his neurological condition could be linked to the thousands of punches he sustained during his career. The River Seine in Paris has swollen to its highest level in more than 30 years. Battered by days of heavy rain, water levels in the centre of the French capital rose above six metres, swamping small quayside businesses and forcing two of the city's metro stations to close. For now, the river remains well below the record highs of 1910. That saw the Seine top 8.6 metres. Two of Paris's most famous landmarks, however, weren't taking any chances. Both the Orsay and Louvre museums were shut to the public on Friday as staff desperately scrambled to move priceless artefacts from cellars to higher ground. Dozens of swanky properties in Paris's chic 16th arrondissement have been submerged and French insurance firms fear the total cost of the flooding could be more than 600 million euros. Some of the hardest hit areas continue to lie just south of the capital. In the suburb of Villeneuve-Saint-Georges, troops were sent in to help stranded residents. Water levels are not expected to recede anytime soon.